In the last movie, you learned to create an animated bitmap to simulate a spinning propeller using only 3ds Max. If you're comfortable using compositing software, you may find it easier to create such an effect using applications like After Effects or Combustion. If you recall, early on you saved a single frame of the propeller in a static position. You will use the static frame and animate it in a 2D application to create a similar effect to what you achieved earlier. Let's try it first using Adobe After Effects, a very popular and powerful application that makes a good companion to 3ds Max. In After Effects, start a new project. Import the propeller.png image you saved earlier. Drag it down to the timeline to create a new 30 second long composition. 30 seconds is more than you need, you'll fix that in a second. The propeller appears in the compositing window. Go to Composition, Composition Settings, and set your duration to 2 seconds. While you're at it, change the background to white to see the propeller better. As you recall, this image file has alpha information and therefore lets you see what lies behind it. Now expand the propeller track and its transforms. Enable animation mode on the rotation track. This will let you create keyframes to animate that layer. Go to the end of the animation and specify a number of turns for the propeller. A value of 2 should be fine for now. You can always change it later if you need to. Press the space bar to view the animation. To add motion blur, it is much simpler here than in 3D software. Simply activate that property at the track level and then enable motion blur for all layers. Play back the animation again. Once it caches the information, it then plays in real time. As you can see, it's much faster and not nearly as taxing as in 3D. To adjust motion blur quantity and quality, you can either alter the animation, in this case the number of revolutions of the propeller, or you can edit the composition settings. To alter the animation speed, go to the end of the animation and increase the number of revolutions to 10. Try it again. An interesting effect, but not exactly as anticipated. Increase it again to about 20 or 21. That's more like what we were expecting. If you feel that the amount of motion blur is inadequate, you can adjust it at the composition settings level. In the advanced tab, you can adjust the shutter angle value. The higher the value, the more blur you get. Bring it down to about 120, or experiment with other values you care to try. The shutter phase is similar to the shutter offset value you learn about while setting the effect in 3ds Max. In a normal situation, it should be equal to a negative half value of the shutter speed. So, if you set the shutter angle to 120, shutter phase should be set to minus 60. You can adjust the samples for more blur quality, but as you can see, 16 samples should be more than adequate. Ultimately, you only need to render out a handful of these images probably a range between frames 16 and 30 for a perfect continuous loop. Adjust your work area accordingly to that purpose. Finally, add the composition to the render queue. Set the render to the work area only, and choose an image type with alpha channel, such as TIFF sequence with alpha. Finally, choose an output name and folder, and click Render. When it's done, and it should be quite fast, you now have an opacity animated map that you can use in 3ds Max. The process is the same as in the last movie, mainly using the TIFF sequence as an opacity map, with transparency based on the alpha channel.
Also, as you did earlier, you can use the composite map in 3ds Max as an added effect to better define the propeller circle. The end result is quite similar to what you have seen before, but was a bit easier to produce, mainly if you are familiar with After Effects. In the next and final movie, you achieve yet again the same results using Autodesk Combustion.